In this video, we're going to talk about loading your Visual Foundation model. To start with, we need to be aware of what service case loads are being applied to. To do that, we look at the home ribbon and at the service case, there is a drop down which indicates a particular load source. Currently, D or dead loads is selected. Other load sources such as live loads, wind loads, seismic loads are listed here. When there are no loads in the load source, they will be gray with a zero in front, as in the case of live loads, which I'm going to select now. So any loads I place on my model, in this case, will be applied to the live load service case. To apply loads to objects like piers and walls, we simply select them and then take a look at the loads ribbon. We have an option to apply load. And when I do that, a load gets applied, in this case, to the top of a pier. And currently, its vertical force is 1 kip. I could change that to 10 kips. As well, I could add sliding forces at the top and moments occurring at the top of the pier. Let's look at how it's done on a wall. I simply select the wall. I could hit the apply load button or as well I can use the right mouse button and hit apply load which I've done and now the load is applied in this case as a resultant of one kip. That load is, is applied as a distributed load across the top. If you prefer to enter distributed loads directly we can change the enter resultants checkbox to no and now I'm entering loads in force per unit length. In addition to entering loads in the global direction, I can also enter them in the local direction. When I select local, I have the option for sliding force parallel to the wall and perpendicular, and moment parallel and perpendicular to the wall. Let's look at applying loads to the foundation itself. If I select an area, in this case this particular slab, I now have an option to apply load, and when I do that, a uniform load will get applied by default. If I'd like to have overturning on that load as well, I can enter an overturning moment, and then my load will, of course, be triangular to produce that moment. I'm going to go ahead and select that load and delete it, and another option I have for loads is to apply a multiple boundary load, and when I do that from the ribbon, we now see we have a load implied apply to the entire combined boundary of our foundation and again we can enter it as a uniform pressure with moments applied. Let's now talk about applying other kinds of load to the foundation boundaries. In order to do that I'm going to remove this multiple boundary load and look at the view from a top-down view. Under the loads menu we have the ability to draw a rectangular load. If I select that and now drag my mouse a rectangular area load will be applied over a given region. We can change the region's width as well as where it's centered at and its left and right boundaries. And also, like other slab loads, we can enter a uniform pressure as well as overturning moments. Similarly, I can draw a circular load. I can draw a tubular load, which is a load, say, around a perimeter, a rectangular perimeter and I can draw a ring load. So that represents the four different kinds of boundary type loads you can apply. Let's rotate the model just a little bit and see a gra maybe a better graphical view of those loads we just created. That summarizes then the application of loads to a visual foundation project. 